Where's James? Hello, mate. <laughs> So the first floor east wing of the extension is nearly ready for D-Day. We call it D-Day because that's the day when the kids move into these lovely immaculate rooms and turn them into something resembling World War II. Ian is in no mood to surrender the territory. He's hanging it out. He's working on those tiny details that nobody else will notice. Not for him, the router and jig. These are the tools of his predecessors. The hammer, the chisel. So satisfying, as Ian would say. So good. Now, the latest material shortage we've got is doorstops. Can't find them for love nor money. Now, why on earth should doorstops be in short supply? Has somebody been panicked buying doorstops? If so, stop it now. Meanwhile, James is crouched down in the understairs cupboard, connecting up the supplies to the laundry room. Nice to see a fellow olive wrapper. He's up on the PTFE, mate, you'll create the shortage. We'll have panic buying PTFE tape next. Yorkshire's like a brand now. Oh, so. okay, cool. Ian is just discovering that the rack was an ancient form of torture. Of course, being Ian, it's all lined up by lasers. I don't think he's used his spirit level since he got that new Milwaukee green beam laser. And then again, he'd expect nothing else. And another rack, his and hers, very nice. Now this is that little attic room that once looked like a complete waste of time. If you remember it, it used to have posts running down the middle and it didn't look like there was any usable space in it. But now we got a consultant engineer to have a look at the original drawings and he's deemed that those posts were completely unnecessary. So a great waste of time on everybody's part and a waste of money. So now we've got a lovely usable space that looks really inviting. In central London, you could rent it out for about mm, probably a thousand pounds a month. Now, the East Wing has its own dedicated consumer unit. And to be quite honest, I've seen smaller consumer boards in houses. Just shows how much electrical equipment goes into a modern build. And here's the Sparks. He's fitting all those Knightsbridge switches and those lovely power points. They were actually white plastic, but then the customer had a change of mind. Eight. Meanwhile, I'm outside fitting the soil stacks. We fitted the soil stacks so that most of it can be taken away. So when they spray the render on, they haven't got to work behind the soil stack. But there are bits which will be solvent welded. Now this hard shell baseball cap is actually from Scott Safety if you want one. And if that sounds too much like a product placement, well it is. It's either that or knock yourself out. I'm trying to help you here. Now, I've got a few rough edges, as everybody knows, but not in my waste pipes. Now, I gave James the choice of a spirit level or a plumb bob. Guess okay. which one he went for. That's good. Thighs that double up as a vice. Well, almost. Get a grip, old boy. Nice, isn't it? Mm been said before but I'm just too attractive. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Is that good? More soil yeah, pipes from be. Northern Building Plastics. James really likes this supplier because they deliver south of the river and they got really good prices. It's a little known fact that you should always use gap fill solvent weld for strap on bosses. If you just use ordinary solvent weld adhesive, it isn't thick enough. You need that extra body. That's the manufacturer's instructions, by the way, not mine. So while all this is going on upstairs, the plasterers are working downstairs.
my fat chart. It'll be for my frivolous fat. Now Ian is fitting some bespoke drying racks which were actually made by James about five years ago for the old utility room and they proved such a success that they're having them moved up into the new laundry room. James King was the brains behind the Hatton Garden heist. Not a lot of people know that. Now, I hate to break it to you, James, old son, but you're never going to get through that hole. You need a bigger core cutter. It's just as well the light. Isn't it? Oh. Oh. Time to strip the protective film off that caber deck flooring. And James has been looking forward to this moment for weeks. He is so excited. Now this floor has seen ice, snow, brick layers, plasterers, and even the odd film crew. And when you strip off that protective cover, it is absolutely pristine. But that doesn't stop James from putting a dilute coat of SBR over the whole thing to add further sealing and waterproofing to a floor which is already sealed and mostly waterproof. Who doesn't love the smell of SBR in the morning? There were a few bits where it got snagged, just through, I mean, it's been down almost six months really, uh, all the hold ups we've had with the weather and everything else. Um, so some bits got caught out and um, it's a little bit dusty in places here and there. Um, and also, really, it, there's the dust on the top, as you peel it up, it sort of throws a bit of dust up back up into the air and it will like, land back down on it. Yeah. So now that this room's finished, we've taken that, we've hoovered it up. This just gets rid of that final bit of dust, it seals it up. It's ready for Monday morning, the carpet fitters are coming in. They haven't got to do anything else, they can just come straight in and lay straight onto it. Yeah. 